Welcome, everybody, to the live chat. Um, if you're in the live chat, you know what I'm saying? Let's go. Let's get with it. Hey, everybody, I'm here with a new host, with a new guest. Um, I got Decent. I had asked him if I said it right, y'all. Y'all know I got an accent. We got Decent here with me on the All Elite with Keeks, another episode. Uh, if you're in the live chat, welcome. If you new here to All Elite with Keeks, welcome as uh, usual. Um, returning guests, welcome. Uh, make sure y'all keep it respectful in the chat uh, to the new guests. Uh, act like you have some home training, okay? Um, how you doing, D-Sand? We'll wait till people get into the live chat. How you doing? I am amazing. Like I said, I've been waiting to do this for a long time, so I'm happy to be starting my 2023 here with you. You know what I'm saying? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. We're going to get into some things. We're going to get into some Dynamite. We're going to get into some Rampage. Uh, also, Battle of the Belts that happened and also Women Business. And, of course, the AW uh, Rest of the Week and also Goofy of the Week. So, we're going to get into some things this week. Um, we're going to start it off with Dynamite Review. Um, Dynamite popped off with the opening match of Ricky Starks versus Chris Jericho. What yeah, do you think about that? Um, that was a really good match. You know, the the crowd in Seattle, probably one of the best crowds. Like, AEW does amazing crowd-wise whenever they go to the West Coast, you know. Of course, they were in Seattle whenever they come to Texas, you know. Yeah. And y'all give it up, you know. They're going to be at the Forum this Wednesday. So, the crowd itself made that match feel like the opening match of a pay-per-view instead of just like a regular weekly TV show. But... The match itself was a really, really good showcase for I mean, I'm happy that Ricky Starts is finally starting to get some consistent footing with, you know, his booking because it was a little bit start stop for a while. I personally thought the Hobbs feud was gonna be like the launching pad for him, but then they kind of like sputtered out right after it. But him working with Jericho, of course, you know, is always gonna put him on that next level. Like I don't care what anybody says, you know, you get a lot of Jericho gets a lot of flack online for you know clout chasing the younger talent and all of that, which I don't understand because somebody at his level could really not work with Ricky Starks, could not work with the action Andretti, and you know not only work with him but put him over the way that he did. So Chris Jericho definitely being involved with that match in particular made it feel like a really really big coming out for Ricky, yes. Ricky Starks, especially with him getting the win as well. Right, because we've been hearing a lot of we tired of Ricky Stars going against jobbers. Now he's going against Chris Jericho. What you got to say now? Like it's it's like if Chris Jericho is like okay, I want to face him to build him up. It says a lot. Yeah, because yeah. Jericho has his you know particulars. You know, hey, it's something about him. I kind of want I want to build him up. Yeah, Jericho. So it's, it's a good sign for Ricky Starks. Yeah, Jericho doesn't have an issue doing a job with people. And I guess, you know, from one perspective, people look at it as him trying to, like, you know, get notoriety off the younger talent. But, like, I don't think people really understand that he really doesn't have to do a lot of the stuff that he does with a mm -hmm. lot of the talent. Chris Jericho could not be as involved with AEW as, you know, he, he, he really is at this point. He could literally just show up, collect the check, and then go do a Fozzie tour and then come back whenever he wants. But he's doing death matches. You know, he's popping up at, you know, PWG shows. Like, he's really waving that banner and not just for the sake of, you know, public appearance, but he really believes in that company and believes in the young talent that that company is on. Right. Absolutely. Um, Graham, what's going on with the live chat? People ain't here today. Everybody sleep or something? <laughs> well, we got one. It must be the game. It's the game. The championship is on. So that's I'm 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 battling with the championship today. It's, it's people in there. They they peeking, but they ain't speaking. They ain't speaking. If you in the chat, you better say something. I know y'all watching the championship match. Y'all supposed to be helping me keeping the score. Okay, <laughs> go TCU. Go TCU. Thank you, Sean. Shit. Um, so, um, after that, we ended up having a, um, promo with Adam Page. He's updating on his health. Um, he let it be known that if he do something 
today or if he do something immediately, he won't be cleared just to end up telling us that he's going to be cleared in L.A. So we're going to end up having the um, hangman versus Moxley um, in L.A. Um, what you think of this feud so far between Moxley and also a uh, hangman Adam page? I love it. I, I really, really love it. <laughs> The score. Seven. <laughs> Damn, TCU, y'all could have stayed home. Shit. <laughs> Embarrassing me. In front of company. <laughs> oh man. But but yeah, I I love this view. You know, it it was a great recovery given what happened, you know, to hangman with um his concussion, but for them to be able to rebound the way that they have and keep it going and it really does feel like, you know, my my thing with Hangman and it's kind of the same thing with like you know Big E as well. You know, was that this was one of those situations where like you had a talent that had everything from A to Z, and it wasn't right. them that wasn't able to fulfill their obligation to fulfill that role as you know the the face of the company. It was booking in the company that let them down essentially. Mm -hmm. So I have never ever soured or cooled off on Hangman in the least bit, but I feel like. This, you know, iteration of him, like, showing that grit, showing that, you know, determination, no matter what's happening with them, is, like, this this version of Hangman is somebody who will play very, very well in, like, the territory era of wrestling. Oh, yeah. Like, just, like, the whole cowboy aesthetic, just, like, you know, the, the, the grit, the determination, him being so likable, you know, dudes like him, you know, women like him. So, like, he's, like... That's a man. Like, yeah, exactly. Like you say, yeah, tweet, that's a man. <laughs> but um, with Moxley kind of being, you know, the antithesis of that, but still being sort of the same thing as him, like very gritty, very, you know, from the bottom, you know, very like, yo, let's fight. Like, it's like two opposites, but also the same exact person, like having having this match. And I'm, I'm excited for it. Right. He's been um, cutting probably one of the best promos um, yeah. since this feud started. Um, still, my favorite promo is I Am A Man. That's still probably one of my favorite promos that he that he's done. I'm angry. Um, I'm frustrated. I can't sleep. I'm the Right. You know, the way he went in with that, and even his um his promo on Rampage, it's like, yo, dog, like... We we know you know who you know always gets the the nod of being in quote unquote the best promo in in AEW, but I feel like Hangman is like one of the best promos in not just AEW but in wrestling. Like yes. he, it, every everything is just believable about his aesthetic and you know everything surrounding his character is is really really dope. And to to that same extent, same thing with Mox, like very believable and what they both do because to them it's not essentially a gimmick it's who they are just turned up to 11 so mm -hmm. that's definitely something i'm looking forward to next week well wednesday on dynamite yes and then we also have like a little preview of jungle hook um that's <laughs> new a new uh uh thing coming <laughs> y'all say hey to mama keeks y'all <laughs> Uh, uh, mama, just because your birthday tomorrow don't mean show out, okay? Happy um, birthday, wait. Mama Keeks. Yes, so Mama Keeks' birthday is this her birthday week, y'all. Uh, she turned a big 5 0, so yeah, she's she's cutting up right now, but um, yes, we have a glimpse of Jungle Hook. Um, I it, it's new to me, I have to see what it looks like in the ring. I have to see what it looks like because I'm still kind of not sold on it, but I'm I'm excited for it, but I'm not sold on it if that makes sense. So here's what I I want to happen. I want Hook to turn on Jungle Boy and join the firm. Why? Because I feel like so with, with Hook, I feel like they not necessarily they had lightning in a bottle with Hook, but like the the way Hook debuted and like the the few matches that he had, like fresh off of his debut, were like we got something here. And then it kind of hit a snag with the whole Dan Housen thing, and it got it kind of got a little bit weird, you know. And mm -hmm. then he won the FTW title from Ricky, and it was like okay, we might be back on track again. But then it's kind of it just kind of feels like Hook is just floating. You know, and I kind of want him to have like that that edge again of being that killer. And I feel like being with, you know, a heel faction might kind of put him back on that footing. And plus, I feel like Jungle Boy really doesn't have anything to do right now. 
So I feel like giving him somebody like Hook, who he would give Hook a great match, you know, and like probably put him on that level because we've only seen Hook in like, you know, spurts, really. Like he's had really quick matches, you know, squash mm-hmm. matches, you know, the action Bronson match and things like that. So they're more exhibitions than, than anything. And that's not to discredit his ring work at all because for somebody who is just really starting to get in there, he's he's amazing. I've been a fan of Hook since his first match, but I feel like he just kind of needs something, you know, to kind of give him that killer edge again. You know, he's still a fan favorite. I don't think people are going to be too yeah. need to boo him, but I do feel like he kind of just needs something to like go after an attack. And I feel like him and Jungle Boy could kind of, you know, have some sort of magic together in the ring. Yeah, that makes the most sense. And like I've always said, my theory is Jungle Boy is going to be the one who dethrones MJF. I don't like. I still have that theory. He's the pillar that's going to do it. He's, he's going to get that tag. He's going to get that AEW championship. He's the next up. I'm not against it. I'm a, I'm yeah. a real big Jungle Boy fan. Like me too. He, yeah, I feel like he has like a lot of the, a lot of the tools that you know people said that he didn't have. Like showing that he can cut a promo has been like okay now y'all can shut up. Like he, he he pieced a lot of things together and he's still learning. And that's what people don't realize about a lot of these AEW guys is that a lot of them are just being exposed to a television audience for the first time. Like the company is in its fourth year this year. Not to cut you off. Hold on. Not not my mama trying to steal drip from me. <laughs> I'm like, hey, my drip, drip. Mama, that was drip. All right. <laughs> she to, don't be trying to steal drip from me. <laughs> y'all let her live. It's her birthday. Yeah. Yeah, thank y'all for telling her happy birthday. Keep telling her happy birthday if you're in the chat. Um, But I do agree with you as far as Hook needing the killer instincts that he once had. But I also got to give it up to Taz because Taz just sounds like a proud dad. Yeah. Every time Hook gets up there, he just goes off script and just sounds like a dad. And it's so funny to me. He's like, yeah, that's, yeah, I, I taught him how to do that. He, yeah. he learned from the best. He learned yeah. from the best. <laughs> Taz, and Ty, Taz on commentary, like just across the board, is probably one of the best things about AEW, honestly. Like Taz has always been great on commentary. Loved him when he was in WWE. Loved him in TNA. But like, Taz and AEW, I feel like that that's it. That's it. <laughs> yes, yes, it's perfect. And then we're gonna move on. Um, the next thing that happened after that was the AEW World Tag Team Championship match. Um, it was the Acclaim versus Jeff Jarrett and also Jay Lethal, which was a fun match. It was a fun match, uh, a good little TNA type of match. Uh, and Jeff Jarrett, I've been seeing all over, is finally <laughs> getting his appreciation that he so rightfully deserved. And let Shantice tell you, she does not like it because, like she said, she been, she getting, been on the way. <laughs> she said, Hart said that she been getting slandered for liking Jeff Jarrett, and to see all y'all is appreciating him, she do not like it. And she said it stinks in here. That's what she said. <laughs> I'm gonna say something that's like there she go. <laughs> She was coming. <laughs> I'm gonna I'm say something that's like probably really damning, but I honestly feel like Jeff Jarrett is ahead of his time in so many yeah. different ways. You know, because you think about you know WCW, you think about you know TNA to extend, and even the the latter end of his WWE run. Like you go back and look at a lot of that stuff, and a lot of that stuff was really really good. You mm-hmm. know, but given you know his reputation i guess because jeff has a reputation of being you know a carny for lack of a better term but like he's one of the few people who gets this business you know like he was born into it of course but like to be able to be as consistent as he's been like jeff gonna get a check he's yeah gonna, he's, he's gonna get a check and he's always looking to do right by the business despite the narrative that you know has always been you know put out about him like of course he's gonna make himself the star of his own promotion who didn't do that Dusty did right. it. You know, Lawler did it. You know, um, shit, Fritz this man won the Royal Rumble. Fritz <laughs> did it with you know, himself and his boys. Vern did it at one point. So it's like, of course, you know, you're going to make yourself the top star in your own promotion. But it's good to see Jeff Jarrett, like you said, do get his recognition because for far too long he's been really good. And even now, considering like you, you watched that match, like you said, it was a fun match. And I don't think we really appreciate the shape that Jeff Jarrett is in for his age. 
and like how he's yeah. still moving the way that he does, you know, at his age. Like I know he's kind of like an afterthought in so in so many different ways because the spectacle of Jeff Jarrett is just so big, but he can still get it done in that ring. Yes, he did. He did um, a great job, and I've heard that um, he produced the match. That's um, great. Yeah, that's. I heard that he um, produced the match, um, the feud between them two, and also mm-hmm. produced the match at Battle of the Bills as well. So, um, I saw a risky ass tweet that said, "How come the TNA shit is working, but the ROA shit is not?" And I was just like, "Bro, really?" <laughs> I seen that. I was like, I saw that shit oh, and I started oh, laughing. It. And I was like, bro, <laughs> the points were made. <laughs> Jesus. But, um, <laughs> yeah, I, I saw that. I was like, yeah, uh, uh, yeah. But this was a really fun match. Um, the acclaim did amazing job. Jeff Jarrett and Jay Lethal did amazing. Like everything was it, it fits. So like we almost got the fucking screw job. Everybody was, we were about to trip out with that, you know, Jeff Jarrett uh, and Jay Lethal about to win the tag titles. All about to, all about to be all elite, uh, all WWE with Keeks. <laughs> uh, that was about to happen. <laughs> I, I was like, yo, what the fuck? That, that, like, my immediate reaction when I saw that, but I was like, yeah. You know so he did a great job um, with this whole thing. So uh, mm-hmm. shout out to Jeff Jarrett. Um, it's good to kind of see him get his appreciation. People like the Bree Woo, Bree Woo. <laughs> like every time he come out, I see that tweet and he trended. He was trending on Wednesday. So, <laughs> yes. So, Sh- uh, Shes, I know you don't like it, but he's finally getting the appreciation that he deserves. She said it was a screw job. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yeah, so, that was a fun match. So, a claim in the retaining. Um, after that, um, and then after that match, we had uh, Brian Danielson versus Tony Nese. Um, I know some people was feeling some type of way about Brian Danielson was doing this match instead of being in New Japan, but you have to also remember Brian Danielson also wanted to face Tony Nese because he likes Tony Nese as a wrestler. So um, he picked this. He picked the opponent. He wanted to wrestle Tony Nese in his hometown. So um, what did you think about this match? This match was a good match to me. Yeah, this match did what it was supposed to do. It was supposed to, you know, convey Brian's killer instinct as, like, you know, the the wrestling savage that he is. And Tony Nese, you know, being in that spot. Like, I don't think people realize with professional wrestling that, you know, people like Tony Nese are necessary. And I know Mm -hmm. people may classify him as, quote, unquote, a jobber in, in, in some regard or, you know, lower, you know, mid card or whatever you may call it. But it's things like that that, heighten and bring out things like what we saw in Brian Danielson, you know, yeah. in case people forgot because most of those matches that, you know, Brian has, he they're super competitive. You know, yeah. They're going 15, you know, 10, 15, sometimes 20 minutes. But to have, like, a, a good old-fashioned squash match in your hometown, like, that's something that's needed, you know. Nice could look, you know, still strong in that instance because he got – he got his head kicked in by, you know, arguably one of the best wrestlers in the world yeah. right now. So, yeah, everything in, in that instance did what it was supposed to do. And as far as people saying that he should have went to Japan and, like, there's there's plenty of time for, for Brian to go still, you know. So, and let him do what, you know, he, he's in AEW to do. I know during the scrum he said he's there to kick people's heads in, but trust me, he's there to help, you know, as many people as he possibly can. So, yeah. This match because I still want that Zack Sabre Jr. and Brian Gaines. Oh, we, we, we need cannot that. retire until that happens. The, the, the streets need that. The, the streets, streets need, need it. We, he cannot <laughs> we retire until that happens. Hey, it, this, if we get if we get forbidden door two again this year, that that has to be. That it has, to, has be. to happen. Uh, they saying it is. They saying it will happen. Uh, they getting another forbidden door two. But that got to happen this time. That definitely like, has to I, I got to see it. I, I thought he was going to show up on the jumbo screen. It didn't happen. I was like, okay, maybe maybe we'll get it again. We, we got time. We got time. We got to do it. We, like, before he got a quiz, we got to have it. Um, that match was uh was was great. Like you said, Tony Nese was still showed and strong. Tony Nese is a great competitor. He's a great wrestler. Um overall so you was able to see Tony Nese's skills as well but of course it's Brian Danielson he's one of the best technical wrestlers of this era so 
what more can you do? And then after that, that's when uh, Fragile Squark Boy, he came out um, and got Sun on the mic again by Brian Danielson. Um, now that you hear this, what do you think so far of MJF's title run? Um, so there's an expression, um, the the man doesn't make the, the title doesn't make the man, the man makes the title or whatever. Mm-hmm. And I feel like in this instance, like MJF is not being made by that title, but like he, if we're thinking about it, him having the title, it was eventually going to happen. But mm-hmm. I feel like, you know, it's just something that's sort of an afterthought just because everything else surrounding the MJF character, you know, yeah, he needs the title just for his own vanity or whatever, but I don't feel like the title is necessarily being elevated, which you probably won't because the whole idea is that he has the title as a bargaining chip. It's not something yeah. he, he's not, you know, carrying the torch and, you know, wanting to be the best professional wrestler and represent this company as the best professional wrestler in the world. So him having that title kind of feels like it's in that sunken place and we're just all waiting for who's going to be the person that's going to take it off of him. That's exactly how I feel, too. He's just holding that bitch hostage and just like, yeah, you know, like we didn't like even even in 2019 when Chris Jericho had it. We know he didn't have that many matches, but at the same time, he still made it seem important. Yeah. Right. Moxley made it seem important. Kenny Omega made it seem important. Adam Page made it seem important. Even uh, the the short little reign that he had is mm-hmm. still fit important. Now we have the TNT Championship matters more than this shit. <laughs> and was, I'm not was... even thinking on bias. I'm just being realistic. <laughs> Regardless no, yeah. of, of how I personally feel about him, it's just this title run. I'm not a fan of it right now. Yeah. And, you know, I'm not a fan of it, right? Like, it feels like he got the the uh, the uh, fucking 24 uh, 7 championship right now, yeah. Because so much, of, and this is where the issue with professional wrestling kind of like having those blurred lines kind of messes it up, messes it up for the fans because we all know like what's happening behind the scenes with, you know, as far as his contract coming up. So we know for a fact that, you know, the idea of him holding it until 2024 is a huge possibility. So now we're pretty much buying our time until then, you know, to see who's going to be the person, you know, that, that essentially is going to take it away from him. You know, it's kind of like a, a, a Roman Reigns scenario right now with MJF where it's like, you see somebody step up, you go, yo, that's going to be a dope match, but we know he's not losing, you know? So for, for the time being, that's what the, the title is going to feel like, you know? And I don't know, hopefully, you know, MJF being, you know, a, a student of the game, they'll be able to, to craft some great stories and, you know, put us in that, you know, suspended, you know, disbelief that he could potentially lose the title in a certain instance, but for right now, like you said, it just feels like, you know, it, it's something to kind of feed into the narrative of whether or not he's going to leave or he's going to stay from 2024. It's given transitional champion. Yeah. that, that that's, It's really, that's what, that's what it's giving right now. Yeah. It, it doesn't feel like, you know, but once again, maybe that that is the intention of it just feeling like it's just this thing in his possession as far as like it being a championship. Like, let me give it to him so he can shut the fuck up. Yeah. <laughs> 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 That's basically what I'm getting out of it. Okay, so um, after that happened, um, we ended up having um, AR Fox versus Swerve Strickland. Um, <laughs> AR Fox and Swerve Strickland, they they had a feud together since Lucha Underground. Underground, so yeah. It was nothing new to them. Um, of course, it was going to be a banger match. They used to one another, so it was great. It was one of those great matches to me. Um, you know, Swerve. Never seems to amaze me. So does AR Fox. So it was a it was a great match. Uh, what did you think? I think you could have gave me fifteen minutes of that. I feel like that could have went a little bit longer. You know, like I wouldn't have been mad at that at all. You know, I know the idea right now is to have Swerve be like this. You know, like if not, you know, one of the top hills, like the top hill right now in AEW. I know that's the that's the feeling that you get with, with Swerve, you know, just from the, yeah. the treatment 
everything that he's gotten. But as far as like having somebody like AR Fox, who, you know, just got signed recently, giving him that, you know, that spot to kind of showcase what he can do for people who aren't familiar with this indie work, who aren't familiar with Lucha Underground. Yeah, I, I, I was a fan of this match, but just the the fan of both of these men and me was like, yo, this could have went just a little bit longer. Just for the wasn't a bad match, but you know, just me being the glutton that I am for dope wrestling from these two. Yeah. Like this could have gone like flippy this. shit. Yeah. I, that's that's <laughs> when the flippy shit like, you know, really, you know, enthralls me when it's done the right way. You know. But yeah, it, it was a great match. And I honestly hope to see a lot of, of AR Fox in, in twenty twenty three. I don't want him to be one of those guys that kind of, you know, disappears off the radar, you know, and, and kind of pops back up when needed. You know, I want him to have some sort of consistency throughout 2023. Well, AR Fox is signed, but he's also signed as a trainer as well. So if we don't see him on screens, it's because he is behind the scenes helping the new talent of ROH, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, ROH dope. and also uh, IEW. Mm-hmm. So he's also a trainer. So he's still, he's still going to be busy. If you don't see him on the screens because he's behind the scenes doing hold stuff. On, hold on, Keeks. Hold on, Keeks. AR Fox got two contracts too? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, trainer and a, no, for real. Like, did they give him two contracts? I don't know about the two, but I do know that he is also a, a trainer as well. So uh, they see, got they, all the other all them, all them white folks got two contracts. That's all I'm saying. It, that's that's what I've been saying. Them white folks got two con, but I, I he, he might got two of them too. I, I just know. I that just want to make sure my nigga trainer. Gucci. That's all. <laughs> I just know that he's training and he's also part of the roster. So you know he he yeah. So salute to him with this. So he's helping. You know, the new guys and also some vets and also, you know, those that's in dark elevation. So you'll see a lot of AR Fox in the in behind the scenes as well as on TV. So that's a good thing. Um, also on Dynamite, so we're going to get into the main events. Uh, we had the TNT Championship, Samoa Joe versus Darby Allen. Darby Allen got it back in blood. And he is the two-time TNT champion. A good call um, because I love Darby Allen. He's probably one of my favorite pillars besides Jungle Boy. Him and Jungle Boy is like Nick to Nick to me with the pillars. Um, so they had to put it back on the pillar. Um, and he's 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 one of the champions. He's not the champion that's just holding the belt. Uh, he's a champion that's uh, he wrestled the same night as soon as he got the belt. So. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm happy that Darby Allen got the belt back. Of course, TNT invests in him too, so it made sense why he got the belt back too. Uh, how you feel about Darby Allen being a, a two-time TNT champion? So one of the things that I always said was um, I felt like the TNT title took a dive after Miro lost it, and prior to Miro getting it, Darby had it. So it's kind of like coming back to prominence with Darby being at you know the forefront of it. And that's not to take away from, you know, Warlow or, you know, even Joe in that instance. Once again, that's one of those situations where it's not the people holding the title that's, you know, feeling the title. It's the booking around the title that's kind of doing the title, you know, you know, this justice in that in, in that instance. But I'm happy that Darby got it back in. I saw something to the effect of like way to kill somebody, you know, on the on Twitter complaining about how this did, you know, this did damage to Joe's momentum. Like Joe's only had what three losses in in, since debut. And not only that, I don't think people understand that with certain people like, you know, uh, a a Brian Danielson to a certain extent, even a Samoa Joe, these guys in their forties, this is their job to come and help elevate the younger talent. Joe doesn't Mm -hmm. need the, the quote unquote momentum, you know, he he's there to, to help in, in any way possible. And he's still ROH, TV champion. So, what, I don't get, you know, what, I don't get what the, the, I don't get what the issue is with like Joe, like losing to Darby in his hometown. Because had this been WWE, would have complained how Darby ate a loss <laughs> in his hometown. So, you know, give the people what they want. And that, that was the right call, honestly. And I can't wait to see what Darby does with this run. <laughs> Right, absolutely. Um, I saw that too. Um, people were saying that Samoa Joe lost to a, a jobber and stuff like that. Uh, y'all need to give Darby Allen way more credit than y'all see because Darby mm-hmm. Allen can actually wrestle, he's just a stunt man. 
You yeah. know what I'm saying? But he can actually wrestle when it's time, when it when it needs to be, and he did in this match. Yeah. Uh, so it was well deserved, and um, like you said, the TNT Championship is uh, back in good hands and back in the the forefront of being an important um, title. So we'll see how Darby Allen's title run goes. Um, I'm like, not sure. I feel like Hobbs is going to kill him, though. <laughs> that's what I feel like we're going. Yeah, I feel like yeah, that's they preparing. <laughs> they Darby. I feel like Darby Allen's TNT run is going to be a. Tra- Transitional to uh for Powerhouse Hobbs because we know the the story behind Powerhouse Hobbs because uh, allegedly Miro did not want to uh get pinned by him. It was either him or Ricky Starks. It was one of one of the two black folk that he didn't mm-hmm. want to lose uh to. It was one of it was either or it was either Ricky Starks or Powerhouse Hobbs, and it had to be Powerhouse Hobbs because mm-hmm. they immediately put him in a feud with Warlow and Samoa Joe, so it had to be him. It doesn't work for you. <laughs> yeah, Miro was on some. I don't. I don't want to lose to black folk. <laughs> I'm, that, that's what it looked like to me. You why you? I'm, my thing. I'm like, why you don't want to lose to Ricky Starks at, at Powerhouse House? Why? What they? Why? What's wrong with them? Because they black. You don't want to? Why? It reminds uh, 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 Bobby Lashley scars you that bad. Listen. I'm not saying, but I'm saying. I'm just saying, like, <laughs> the math is mathing right now. Um, so we're going to get into some Rampage, because uh, Rampage and Battle of the Bells happened on the same night. Um, Rampage popped off with Top Flight versus John Moxley and Brian Danielson. I really think that they trying to recruit them to. Um, they've been, this is the second time that they have met up with them, and I feel like they see something in them. Um, but this was a great match all around. Um, they did uh, wore out Moxley and Danielson. They gave them a run for their money. Um, if you can also tell that Lucha Brothers, especially uh, Penta, did a great job with his sons. Um, they did a great job against them, too. Uh, what did you think about Top Flight? What do you think so far from Top Flight? I said that um, I tweeted um, a few days ago, like, Top Flight has to be the team in 2023 like yeah. just not even from their their in-ring work because we could talk about that all day like that's a given at this point those boys could go but just you know from a, a sentimental place like the setbacks that you know Darius has had you know coming back from his injury then getting into the car crash and then yeah Dante being able to you know show out and show what he was able to do, you know, just by himself, you know, as a, a, a solo competitor. And there's not too many people who can do that, you know, on their own, you know, when, right. when they're so for for them to be back in this position where they're being featured heavily, especially with the two top stars and not just AEW, but in the industry and John Moxley and Brian Danielson are just working with that whole Blackpool Combat Club collective on a consistent basis, it seems like like that 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 seems like nothing but but a good sign for for them. So I'm actually really really excited for the 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 year that Top Flight could potentially have. And fun fact, my homie Rated R, he actually is the one who did their theme song. Hmm. Okay. Yeah. Uh, my my boy Rated R did did it did their theme song with Mikey Ruckus. So I'm, I'm definitely okay, excited. Well, shout out to Rated R. Okay. But um yeah, top flight dope dope match, you know, like I said, it it showed that they could go, you know, toe to toe. Like I know they're known for the the high flying and you know the, the acrobatics and the aerial assault, but for them to like get down and fight, like that shows a level of toughness that I feel like is gonna come in handy later on this year when they go against other tag teams. Pretty much, yes. Um I, I saw a little sign of respect from both Danielson and Moxley as well. Uh, so I wouldn't be surprised if they added on added them two into the faction because I think that's where it's headed. Yeah, um, I feel like they, they kind of need, you know, uh, a rudder, for lack of a better term, which is kind of why I'm kind of upset that the whole, you know, faction, if you will, that could have been between them and Leo Rush kind of fell through because mm-hmm. I feel like that could have been something that really, like, launched them into – the stratosphere mm-hmm. even more because on top of Leo Rush kind of being, you know, somebody that compliments their style, Leo Rush has a lot of charisma and can talk on the mic. So that would have been a, a great 
addition to them as a, a, a trio and even thinking yeah. now trio's title, how dope that would have been. But all in due time, I feel like no matter what, Top Flight is always going to be good in, in AEW. Yes, uh, most definitely. Um, also on Rampage, we ended up having a Hangman Page promo um, where he read from his paper and he cut a great promo mm. per usual. Um, like we were saying earlier, Adam Page is probably one of the best promos that's in AEW right now. He just puts his all into it like he meant that shit even like the shit that he did with cm punk i was like oh he meant that shit yeah he, he meant that shit hey man he listen hey man said look i don't care what y'all think of me i'm gonna say how i feel and i and i mean what i say that's basically what he's giving y'all he remind me of walker texas ranger right now <laughs> that's a good In comparison the eyes of the ranger. <laughs> <laughs> You're now Walker, Texas Rage. <laughs> if you're in the chat, tell me the score. I know y'all said that TCU is getting their ass whooped, but I just want to know what's going on. <laughs> but, but yeah, Hangman, like I said, he's been he's been too good for for too long, and like these promos that he's cutting, like it's weird because I feel like at any moment, you know, I'm like after every single Hangman promo, I'm like. Yep. <laughs> Keeps face at the score. <laughs> What's the thing? They, they drove from Fort Worth all the way out there for this shit. Like, they could have stayed home. Embarrassing. Just embarrassing our state. You're just embarrassing us. Oh, my God. Y'all should have started. That's what happens when you're from Fort Worth. You get your ass beat. See? Listen. I don't want no beef, right? I'm just, I'm just here. So anybody in the Fort Worth area, like, could never be Dallas. That's the <laughs> Fort Worth shit. Get your ass beat on live television in front of everybody, in front of the hoes, in front of everybody. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> yeah, rest in peace, TCU. Yeah, man. I my parlay, they miss. They yeah, yeah, Jermaine, they looking up my. <laughs> yeah, back to I don't the uh, back to a real cowboy since <laughs> people embarrassing me in front of everybody. But yeah, um, Adam Page is definitely like I can't I can't sing his praises enough just because like he he's one of those people that every time he cuts a promo, I'm like yo, put the belt back on him like, yeah. <laughs> every single time because it's like you just feel it every single time. Like there there aren't too many believable good guys in professional wrestling anymore. And yeah. like with, with him, it's like, yo, like he could be the face of, of a promotion at any given time just because he's just that good in that role. So, yeah, I can't I can't say enough. I'm I'm really looking forward to that match. That's going to be I know we just started the year, but like that has to be something that goes for a minute just with the animosity and the tension and the build up. You got you got to give that match at least like 20 minutes. Yeah, I've always said the baby faces of this era is Bianca Belair and Adam Page. Those That's two are it. like the baby faces of what you want in a baby face. And I put in Drew McIntyre, even though people was some wrong, like y'all, people wasn't fair to him, but Drew McIntyre, Bianca Belair, and Adam Page are the baby baby faces that are needed in this industry. Like we're we're used to seeing heels all the time. Like everybody don't have to be a heel. It's okay for people to be baby faces. And we have them. We have Bianca Belair. We have Adam Page and Drew McIntyre. I just got to give them a chance. But I think what it is with the, the, the heel dynamic and the face dynamic now is that a lot of the heels are really cool. And a lot of the faces are goofy where it's like, they make a lot of decisions where like, you know, if you're supposed to be good, it, it's kind of like this idea that if you're good, you're not smart in pro wrestling yeah. you know, a lot of the time. So that's why it's it's hard to kind of rally around certain good guys because some of the mistakes that they make was just like, yeah, that wouldn't make any sort of sense in real life. But the way that Bianca comes across, the way that Hangman comes across, and to this day, I'm still a very big Drew McIntyre fan. Yeah, Drew so, Drew. Yeah, despite his, his, you know, how people may feel about him getting like the, the the constant title shots and everything like that, I was still a big fan of Drew because like he's really he's really solid and he delivers in, in the ring every single time. So 
Yeah, I feel like those three are like the, the quintessential baby faces in professional wrestling right now. And you definitely need those, not just for the sake of a franchise or even a company, but just for the morality when it comes to faces and heels in, in pro wrestling. Mm hmm. Absolutely. Um, but uh, moving on from uh, Rampage, after that happened, we had the um, debut of uh, Preston Vance versus Sonico. Um, Vance is now well 10 he's still 10 in my book 10 is now a heel and I actually like it <laughs> this fits him Yeah, this, yeah. this whole thing fits him he rips off masks he dragged the dude all the way to the fucking top and I was like yes this, this is him this is him yeah the stuff that he was doing in Dark Order I respect it I I I love it, but this this right here, this is meant for him right here. Yeah, my so, my, my my only worry is that AW tends to have like a very difficult time booking what I like to call their quote unquote host division, like the the Hobbs, the Warlows, and like now yeah. the advances where it's like they'll go on this tear, and then you know they'll be in line for a title shot. You know, they'll be in line for like something big and then like they'll get to that big thing and then it kind of just like fizzles out from there, you know. Because we in an era where big mans are not as popular as they used to be. Like we had the Canes, we had the Undertakers, we had like they people just not really into yeah, big mans like that, that no more. And that's very unfortunate for these guys because it's not just the fact that they're big, they're big, they can work, they have a lot of presence and they have charisma, like they can talk. So it's, yeah, it, it just feels like, you know, it's kind of, it's kind of unfair to them, you yeah. know, being big and like kind of stigmatized because we look at how a lot of big men would, you know, their build weren't as athletic, weren't as charismatic, but were getting all the shots and all the placements that kind of soured a lot of the hardcore wrestling fans on, you know, men, you know, with that sort of build and that sort of intensity. But yeah, I I like this this progression of, of Preston Vance. And I feel like they need to kind of, you know, AEW needs to kind of build more on, on that division of like, you know, big men who have something to offer rather than just being big like it is in WWE to a certain extent. Like you got Keith Lee, you got Preston Vance, you got Warlow, you know, you got how, yeah, Luchasaurus. Like you don't just have, you know, guys who are just big for the sake of being big. Like they yeah. have presence, they can offer a lot, you know. So I definitely want to see him, you know, succeed in in this current role. And you know, him and him and Roosh as a tag team. It works. That 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 that's money right there. That's money. It works. It that, works that's really well. Right there. It works really well. Um, but yeah, yeah, I like what I saw on Rampage from uh Ten, so I want to see more of that. Um, I think he sold a lot of people too. Like I was seeing people was like, okay, I I I'm feeling this. I'm feeling this from Ten. I like this. So we'll the see more is, what they have in store. The funny thing is, I actually called it a few months ago when I was talking to my homies about it. I was like, yeah, like, take the mask off on um, Preston Vance and make him a heel. And he's he's fine. Like, he mm -hmm. he's good. And they did just that. And like I said, I feel like the sky is the limit right now for him. Right. Pretty much. Um, after that, um, on Rampage, um, another, you know, Darby was back in the boo. He had another match that same night. Uh, uh, Mike Bennett from the Kingdom uh, challenged him uh, to a CNT uh, championship match. We didn't get to see that because it happened off the air. Mm -hmm. um, but he challenged Darby Allen. Darby Allen wrestled again the same night. <laughs> two two matches same night. Uh, so we had that, and uh, Darby Allen did what he had to do and uh, ended up winning the match. Uh, but it also showed. The kingdom in a good light as well. So we saw a little bit of what we will see from the kingdom, as well as Darby Allen. So, like I, yeah. So like I was saying, Darby Allen is making a the TNT Championship belt back uh, important. Yeah, yeah, definitely. And um, mm -hmm. Mike Bennett has been far, far, far too good for far too long. You know, even with a lot of the personal setbacks that he's had and, you know, yeah. the, you know, t 
tumultuous WWE run that he had, like for him and his wife to kind of come out on the other side and still be assets to any company that they work for, be it Ring of Honor, be it, you know, their, their stint and, you know, TNA that they did. And even now in AEW, yeah, that, that was a perfect first, you know, defense for Darby Allen. And I want to see more Mike Bennett. Not even just because of him being like a great, you know, in ring competitor, but from what I've heard about Mike Bennett from like various people, he's just a really good dude. So I like to see good people, you know, especially when they've had a hard time navigating professional wrestling because it's a it's a crazy business. And for him to still be standing to still be as good as he is, he he definitely needs to be able to get more shine. I feel like in AEW or even Ring of Honor, you know, who knows. Very much so. I liked what I saw from Mike Bennett. Um, and also, uh, the um, last but not least that happened, uh, we're going to get into uh, Battle of the Belts. Um, the first match that popped off on Battle of the Belts was uh, the CNT Championship, the tag. Uh, I'm sorry, not the TNT Championship. Uh, the tag team championship. Again, a rematch. The Acclaim versus Jeff Jarrett and uh, Jay Lethal. Like I said, another TNA style match, and it was fun. It was entertaining, and it was a great match. Uh, did now this is when you start seeing the Jeff Jarrett tweets, uh, where people start to <laughs> respect Jeff Jarrett for his in ring work at his age. Um, phenomenal, Jeff Jarrett. <laughs> was great in the ring. Jay Lethal was great in the ring. Um, the things that happen outside the ring, also inside the ring. Like I said, this TNA style match was everything. So, and that's when that dude tweeted why the TNA stuff working and, and the ROA shit is not. That's when he tweeted that. So, that that's when the Jeff Jarrett the uh, appreciation started going off of this match alone. <laughs> they, they did a real good job. I even had to sell hearts. I was like, okay, I know they lost, but you gotta look at this match. This match was really good. But like she said, he was he was robbed. <laughs> he was robbed. He, he yeah, was robbed. like I mean <laughs> the one thing, you know, of course we sung the praises of Jeff Jarrett, but like I think we really have to look My husband at said he gotta go home. <laughs> we gotta really look at how great the the claim have been like yes like the 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 acclaim really like came literally they were a tag team that was put together on dark mm -hmm. by Tony Khan. like you know max caster and anthony bowens like weren't like you know this like indie act that came in and like you know they were literally just put together and to see everything that has come from them working is that beautiful remember, yeah i remember when they were still like healed and like the reaction started to turn a little bit and i was like yo like you make the acclaim baby faces and that's that's money that's it that's that's yeah. money and like to see anthony bowen used to get harassed at one point to being the most loved like people wearing scissors people want to scissor him people asking him for his autograph and he's openly gay so to see this is it's beautiful. It's a beautiful it really thing. Is. And yeah. like he said in one interview, like it's still, you know, it's still surreal to him. Yeah. Everything's still surreal to him. Like, you know, people saying he love him and stuff like that. And him going to one point to, you know, I'm getting threats and all of this for being openly gay wrestler to now being probably one of the most loved openly gay wrestlers of, of this generation. It's it's beautiful to see. And most, you know, I'm not saying that it needs to just be him, but most, you know, that shouldn't matter. Like, as long as they know what the, you know, they, they are good in the ring, which Anthony Bowens is great in the ring. He's, He's been one of my favorite workers for, for quite some time. Like I said, when people were still on, you know, the, the fence about how they felt about the acclaim, you know, mm -hmm. I was still looking at like the actual in ring work and like, I will always look at Anthony Bowens and not to take away anything from Max Caster because like he's, they're, he's they're just a great unit. But like Anthony Bowens in particular, I will like, yo, he can go. He can like, go. Yeah, now, he, Max Caster do got one of the best elbows of this generation. Yo, I will, his, elbow, man, his elbow goes so hard. I yeah, love seeing him do the elbow. And I know like people will say like, you know, they think that the elbow drop is one of the easiest moves to execute. It's really not. It's not. It's, it's really not. To have it look good, as as good as he looks, like, very, very hard to do. So. This shit look better than Terry's. 
Listen. I'm sorry. It, it does. It looks better. If you look at Hulk Hogan shit and you look at Max Caster shit, Max Caster shit is way better. Is a I mean, he has a better form. It's just, it's just better. Yeah, his is his is the the two. I feel like the two best elbow jobs that I like was HBK's and Macho Man's. Those yeah, two, those two were the best elbow jobs for me. And like, I know it's probably blasphemous to kind of like put Max Caster in that category, but like, give it a few years, he'll he'll definitely make his way into that category of best yes. elbow job. <laughs> Cause his elbow, his just it's not sloppy. It's straight like. Yeah. If it, I it, break it, the it, shit, I break it. <laughs> He got, he got form to it. He got form to it. Right. He got a form to it. So that match was fun. Um, also in the bell, the bell, the bell. <laughs> Bree, who, Bree. <laughs> People kill me when I tweet that. Um, also, that happened on the uh, Battle of the Bells. We had the All Atlantic Championship Orange Cassidy versus Kid. Sabian, that was also a fun match, but we saw a side of Orange Cassidy that we haven't seen before. Orange Cassidy got a little bit aggressive in this match. We never seen aggressive Orange Cassidy before, but he was aggressive. But like I said last week, it's lonely at the top, Orange Cassidy. I don't, I don't know what's going on, Orange Cassidy. I don't know. I mean, that, that belt is consuming him right now. <laughs> he, he's that not, he's belt not, is turning ooh. him into something that I'm not liking. <laughs> I mean, no, like you said, it's lonely at the top. It really is. And I, I, I feel like there's a story surrounding this that a lot of people aren't paying attention to, you know. And I really like that you get to see layers of the Orange Cassidy character that a lot of people don't exist because I don't think people in and of itself like really get the Orange Cassidy character. And that's not to say that there isn't depth to it because it is, but to have something like, you know, what took place between him and Trent, you know, when they had their match and like the ending Mm -hmm. of that. And then, like you said, the aggression that he showed in this match against Kip Sabian, you know, I'm interested to see what 2023 is going to look like for Orange Cassidy because Orange Cassidy is one of those wrestlers who I feel like is really, really smart. And yeah. a lot of a lot of the wrestlers on the AEW roster are smart because they can sense the change, you know, long before a lot of people will even, you know, start to make that connection themselves and they're quick to shift before they'll just die on this hill with this character because it's getting a certain reaction. So it's interesting to see where we could potentially go. And as far as Orange Cassidy just across the board, I'm a huge fan of his arguably you know, him and Will Ospreay have one of the match matches of the year last year at Forbidden Door. So, at this point, if you don't like or appreciate Orange Cassidy, it's you know more personal than it is professional at this point because you can't look at you can't look at him in in any sort of uh, esteem and can't find something that you like about either the character or his in ring work. To be completely honest, now. I feel like it has a lot to do with Danhausen being on his side. It's making him kind of that damn Danhausen. Yeah, I because of the curse. <laughs> I feel like it has something to do with that. But we're seeing a side. It, it's one of those when push come to shove. Yeah. Like yeah. um, especially with Kip Sabian because if you if you remember him and Kip Sabian always had this little rivalry up until like since the pandemic era like. It, like yeah. Kip Sabian will always get under his skin. And it's just one of those, like, he keeps pushing me, but at the same time, you kind of see some tension between him and Trent, too. So it's just like, where are we going? Maybe the belt is, is if you've seen The Hobbit, <laughs> you remember when the dwarf, the king dwarf, when he got around the gold, he started to be paranoid. Yeah. He started to be extra aggressive. He started to, like, question people around him i'm kind of seeing that in orange cassidy right now since he's yeah. been all atlantic champion so yeah, which, is kind of, which which is kind of a good story arc for him because you know somebody who is like so laid back and nonchalant like he carries the title around in a book bag you right know, so, so for now to him for him to kind of be more aware of what it is that you know he's in possession of because it's 
room, you know, is essentially potentially ruining his friendships. You know, it has yes. people like Kip Sabian, you know, getting getting him to a certain place that he's not used to being in. So mm -hmm. it gets yeah. lonely at the top. Lonely at the, <laughs> it's lonely at the top. Kip Sabian, he was very evasive on his answers earlier, but it seems that yeah, see, like <laughs> Kip Sabian reminds me of a villain. Uh, of um, in Marvel, yeah, I can't think of the villain name. It's not Doctor Doom, but it's somebody else that that will get under your skin like that. He gives me Kip Saving gives me Loki vibes. Yes, that's what it is. It's Loki. Like he's just like very like you know playful but like maniacal at the same time. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. What Sean say is corrupting. We seeing a corrupt Orange Cassidy right now. <laughs> So we'll see what 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 will end up happening with the storyline. I, I honestly thought that Kip Sabian was going to end up winning, and I thought Trent was probably going to cost Orange Cassidy the match. That's what I was thinking in my head. I was like, okay, Trent might cost him, but that didn't happen. So maybe it's something bigger that we'll probably end up getting with this with this between Orange Cassidy. Yeah, that's that's one of the things that I like about AEW in certain instances, like the. It's not as obvious with, with certain stories about where it may end up, and that's what kind of keeps you like, like a, something mm -hmm. like this isn't like influenced by like you know the, the the booking more or less. It's more so a story that could play out without any sort of like political or like business agenda. Where it's like, well, mm -hmm. Orange Cassidy is selling all these shirts, so he has to stay on top right now. Like everybody is, you know, in one way or another, like very selfless in that company. So mm -hmm. it's about telling the best story possible, independent of, you know, what everybody may think their spot is at the time. Pretty much, yeah. So now we're going to get into some women business. All men shut up unless you raise your hand, okay? If you're a man, you have to raise your hand to say anything, okay? All men should stay out of women business because that's women business. That's women business. Women business. Make sure you get your women business to merch as well so we're gonna get into women business uh first things first that happened on dynamite with women business uh ref aubrey edwards uh she was more involved in um as far as the character in matches like the uh acclaimed and jeff jared and jay lethal match uh you saw her involved in the chris jericho that was some shoving going there um so aubrey is making a character for herself um you know, we see it with red shoes. We see it with the heel ref in a uh, triple A. So we finally getting again in America uh, the the ref because you know we used to have it with, uh, uh, um, yes, yes. You have a question. Yes, you may speak. Yeah. So you were literally saying what I was thinking when I got the notes for um about Aubrey because um if. You've been to AEW show, like you've seen the response that she gets when she oh, yeah. comes out. It's like very, very, you know, resounding. Yeah, she gets a pop just like a wrestler. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Like she gets she gets Aubrey chance and everything. But it's like you said, we're getting back to that era of where a referee was an essential part of the show because yeah. in a literal sense in pro wrestling, like the ref is one of the parts of the show. And, you know, I feel like WWE kind of stripped that away over the last few years where like the, the mm -hmm. referees became, you know, nameless and, you know, to a certain extent faceless bodies that, you know, take a bump and have no real sort of presentation of character within the confines of a match. So for us to be able to have some sort of semblance of that old era where, you know, you knew the rest by name, you knew Mike Kyoto, you knew yeah. Earl Hebner, you knew, yes. you know, Timmy White, you know. Yeah. So to, to now have that where, you know, Aubrey and you know even a few others you know in AEW who kind of did you know mention <laughs> she robbed Jeff, <laughs> but for for Aubrey to get that you know that nod as you know being a, an essential character in in AEW television you know even going back to you know Athena you know going on you know the tirade that she did and you know knocking Aubrey out like for her to be an essential part of the show who's you know not a natural wrestler I feel like is it's really dope and it definitely adds to, you know, the presentation of, you know, women in, in that company. Yes, absolutely. Um, back to women business. Um, uh, men shut up unless, uh, I call on you. Okay. Um, 
Also, um, we had the backstage segment of uh, Britt Baker, Jamie Hayter. Um, they did a promo on Soraya and her mystery partner. Um, they left some clues. Um, uh, it's hinting that it may be who we think it may be, but I still don't, I, I won't know until I see it, okay? So we have that. And then also, um, we had Soraya also did a backstage segment with Tony Storm and Sheeta. And um, Soraya kind of did Sheeta on a little bit. I didn't like that. Uh, Sheeta is one of the best women's wrestler of this era. Uh, she's she's a double champion, for goodness sake. <laughs> um, so how dare Soraya say that? Um, but she says that her partner is going to be Tony Storm. That's what she claims. Um, so we're going to have Tony Storm and uh, Soraya uh, on this Wednesday. Uh, so she says. Um, also, that happened Gil um, and Red Velvet versus Kiara Hogan and Sky Blue. That happened on Dynamite. Um, Red Velvet was on some um, bitch... Um, you're on your own type shit. And then she ended up leaving her by herself in her in the ring. So the story between uh, Jade and Red Velvet is brewing. Um, but also, if, you know, the things between Jade and Red Velvet has always been a thing since Jade first got to AEW. So this is a good little story to continue on. Um, uh, uh, this is my professional voice. I'm speaking professional right now because this is women business. I have to be professional. Um, so Jade ended up winning um, the match. She pinned her by herself or whatever. Red Velvet went on to the sunset. Um, what happened on Rampage Women Business? Um, we had Britt Baker and Jamie Hayter versus the Renegades, the twins. Um, of course, they squashed them girls. Um, but the Renegades did a great job in the ring as well. So um, they did pretty great. Um, we pro- I think we'll see them... Um, in the future at AEW or probably ROH because it's like the third time that I've seen them on TV. So they may be on a roster pretty soon, uh, the Renegades wins. Um, but uh, the interesting thing that happened is uh, Britt Baker keeps getting the pin and uh, the champion is not. So um, if y'all have been paying attention to that, what's up with that, Britt Baker? Um, so that's that, that, that's something right there. If you haven't been paying attention, Britt Baker, in a way, has kind of been, you know, even though Jamie's the champion, I'm still Britt Baker, if y'all haven't been paying attention. She slick did it in a promo, and she's doing it in the ring as well, making sure that she gets the pin and making sure that she's doing all the talking, okay? that it, It's a story in within a story. Um, let's see. Hold on. Let me get my notes out. I have to be professional. Hold on, hold on. Oh, shit. <clears throat> uh, yeah, so then um, we had Aubrey again versus Dutt um, during uh, uh, the Battle of the Belts and shit. Uh, we had a ref versus ref because I don't know who told Dutt that he was a fucking ref, but he ended up being a ref and Aubrey had to slam that down and she tore his pencil and he felt like his legs crumbling or something. I guess it affected him. Um, she broke his pencil and he started crying. Um, so yeah, like more of Aubrey Edwards being more involved in these matches. Um, in Rampage, oh, I'm sorry, Battle of the Belts, we had Jay Cargill versus Sky Blue. Uh, Jay Cargill did some phenomenal ass shit. Um, uh, Battle of the Bands. Uh, the you seen the clips? Everybody seen the clips. That shit was amazing. I seen that live, and I was I stood up. I was like, oh shit. <laughs> Jay Cargill must heard what I said. Um, because my issue with Jay Cargill was she just had to learn to trust her opponent. Um, it's all about trusting your opponent. Uh, and she finally trusts Sky Blue. I also want to add to Women Business, ever since Billy Gunn has been over the production of Women Business uh, between the matches, the promos, Women Business has elevated. So, Billy Gunn, thank you so much because you are helping the women's division. Billy Gunn, you know, he's always been an advocate for China. He stood by her side when all this shit went down. So he is for women business. So 
Thank you, Billy Gunn, for helping the women, the ladies. Uh, you are a true vet. That's what a vet does. Uh, so um, Billy Gunn um, produced the match of Jay Cargill and Sky Blue. Um, he produced the match between uh, the Renegades and also uh, Jamie Hayter and also uh, Britt Baker. And he's been producing for the past, uh, I believe, three weeks. Um, so we've been seeing it. So thank you, Billy Gunn, for helping women. Um, um, Jeff Jarrett is just being a true vet right now. He's being a vet, okay? He he can't win it all like my Jericho. Um, <laughs> I hope they never have. A, if Jeff Jarrett and Chris Jericho ever have a few, y'all, yeah, 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 keep coming yeah, off yeah. here. It's, 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 we gonna be Venus and Serena Williams up in here, okay? <laughs> Jeff Jarrett was on talk of Jericho. Um, Jeff Jarrett will be over the house shows. Um, he also has stated to all you people that's in Indies, he stated that. It will be some ramp, uh, dark and elevation being booked for the house show. So hey, get on your grind. Uh, don't be tr don't be listening to uh, 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 these people on Twitter. You better get on your grind because if you want your life to change the next day, like uh, 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 Ar Fox yeah. and uh, some more people, get on your grind. Fuck these people. These people are still at home. So like Jeff Jarrett said. Uh, he's going to be over the house shows. Uh, they haven't released a date for AEW house shows, but he did state that some dark and maybe elevation in these wrestlers can be booked as well. It's just another quote unquote developmental for the uh, wrestlers that's on roster as well as, you know, you may get picked to be a roster. You know what I'm saying? So shout out to Jeff Jarrett and Jericho for that. Uh, Talk of champion. I mean, shit, not talk of champion. Shit, she talk of Jericho. She had me Star Trek. All right, this is so what? Oh, let me get my women business of the week. I'm sorry. My women business of the week goes to Miss J Cargill. I mean, the fit that 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 finisher that was enough. That she improved. That now this is the J Cargill I want to see from here on out. This is what I want to see from here on out. You trust your opponent and you give it your 110. So Jay Cargill is my women business wrestler of the week. You go, girl. Yes, ma'am. Yes, yes, yes. That bitch, as she says. Yes, yes. Snap, snap. All right. So who is your AEW wrestler of the week? Oh, so I'm called on now. I can, I can speak again. Yes, yes, you can. Women business is over. Cool, cool, cool. My AEW wrestler of the week is the anxious millennial cowboy himself, Mr. Hangman Adam Page. Even though he hasn't wrestled this week, just the promos alone and just everything that he's been doing in this build up to his match with John Moxley this week on Dynamite has been phenomenal. Like we said, good baby faces are hard to come by in this era of professional wrestling. And I feel like Hangman embodies that every step of the way between his ring work, his promos, and just his connection with the crowd that hasn't wavered in the least bit because despite his championship run, who some people may not have been the biggest fan of, you know, I, really, I enjoyed his run. I did. You know, I enjoyed his run. You know, of course it could have been better, but at the same time, you know, I feel like, He's been great, you know, no matter where he is on the card. If he's doing Dark Order stuff, he's phenomenal. If he's doing stuff with Kenny Omega, phenomenal. The Elite, you know, by himself, you know, whatever. He's just great at what he does. And hopefully he has another good 2023, and I can't wait to see him back in the ring. Yes, um, absolutely. So we have John Moxley versus Adam Page, uh, which is this week um, on Dynamite. So that's going to be intense uh so we finally get to see them the last time we seen them we saw what happened to adam page we let's pray everything goes right this time no injuries no none of that um so yeah 
like you said, Adam Page has been doing phenomenal in the promos. I did enjoy his championship run. I feel like people was not fair because he's a baby face. And people wanted to see him be aggressive. And I'm like, y'all, did y'all not see none of his matches? He, he's aggressive in his matches. What more do you that, want? That Texas death match he had with Lance Archer was really good. Right. I'm, the matches with um Brian Danielson were really good. I'm like, what what more do you want? are fragile? These people are fragile. Yeah, so, so, but we know with professional wrestling, like as far as far as like a, a solid baby face with a lot of people, they're more invested in the actual chase than they are the victory. And then once the person gets there, it's like, okay, who's next? You know, we got to the yeah. Point. Instead of letting it play out or letting it get to a, a place where we can see more character development from the baby face, but mm. I feel like you know somewhere down the line we're gonna see Adam Page as AEW World Champion again and. That this is going to be an undeniable run the next time he's with the belt. Right. The only per the only person that I'm like uh, I'm ready for him to not get it. I'm ready for him to is uh, the Scar Boy because I I'm I'm not I'm not sold on this shit. I'm ready for like I'm th this this cheap shit that he doing right now. This whole you know we've seen it already. We've heard it already. We done heard all the fucking jokes. Get in the fucking ring. You know what I'm saying? We we talk. We done heard it all. It's not funny. It's not none of that. Okay. Whatever. Um, my wrestler of the week goes to Mr. Darby Allen. Um, Darby Allen, the new TNT champion. Um, I have enjoyed I've always been a fan of Darby Allen. Um, he beats Samoa Joe. I mean, what more can you say? Um Darby Allen has a lot of heart. That's what I like about him. He has a lot of heart, um, a lot of dedication. And, uh, you know, the promo that Sting did against him is is probably one of the best promos that doesn't happen because, you know, it's Sting. You can't go wrong with Sting. Go um, so it was, a, it was a great match. Um, I love Darby Allen. So Darby Allen is my wrestler of the week. Um, I know my work husband would love that I picked Darby Allen. So. <laughs> Darby definitely... I feel like, you know, we talk about, you know, certain wrestlers who have a, a connection with, you know, with the crowd, you know, kids, especially like for, for us, it was Jeff Hardy. You know, yeah. I feel like Darby is kind of continuing that legacy and not just because of like the, the daredevil stuff that he does. That's a part of it. But I feel like Darby more so embodies, you know, that that spirit that a lot of fans who watch pro wrestling love where, you know, this one point that you know that Jim Cornette made that I actually agree with, which is few and far in between. <laughs> so the way oh. that the way that you know Jim describes professional wrestling, he was like, if you're driving down a highway and you see a big guy and a little guy fighting, you know, and then you know the the little guy starts beating the shit out of the big guy, you kind of start rooting for for the little guy. Mm -hmm. All you do is add a pay scale to that, and you basically get professional wrestling. And I feel like. Darby is that embodiment where, you know, he's he's small in stature, but like just the, the energy that he has and just the, the fight that he brings and the connection that he has with the crowd. It's like you can't help but to not root for him in, in that regard. So, yeah, this is going to be a good year for Darby as well, especially as TNT champion. I think it was Chris Jericho that said he's little, but he's strong as shit. Yeah, like he has to, like he's really strong to be that little. <laughs> I, I definitely believe it. You know? Yeah, so Darby, yeah. Darby has had a lot of, of of great matches. I I was actually there in person on um, last year where he had the match with um, the ladder match with Jeff Hardy, which was oh yeah, with the, the hardcore match with Jeff Hardy, which was insane. And you know when him and Sting um faced um house of black and, and muda showed up i was there for that as well and just like i said the response that darby gets and seeing it in person like it, it it's something that really draws the crowd so for him to be one of the pillars still very very young in his career i feel like that that's a sound investment that AEW has right now with him pretty much so now for the goofy of the week, y'all, this one's kind of hard because AEW been on their best shit. You know, Tony Khan has been happy. Jaguars is in the playoffs. Uh, Tony Khan's been booking like crazy. So ain't nobody been embarrassing me like that on the AEW end. But I want to talk about the IWC as far as the goofy of the week because, you know, we saw that 
Mercedes Monet did debut at New Japan. Um, you know, she she the she debuted and everything. Um, she's almost selling out the show that's happening in California. Um, but the goofy of the week is to the people that have said Mercedes Monet is not a draw, baby. It's only five seats left, and them seats probably already missed out. Those seats are probably already gone. Yeah, it's only <laughs> five seats left uh, between her and uh, I keep I say her name wrong to my accent. Uh, that she's facing against at the uh, Valley. Oh, um, Kyrie. Yeah, her and Kyrie, they have a match, and it's pretty much sold out. But y'all told me, y'all told me, y'all told me she wasn't no draw. Y'all told me black women ain't no draw. That's what y'all said. That's what that's what it was told to me. So the crazy thing about that is that when people say that, they don't they don't take into consideration the metrics that she was drawing in WWE. Like it, it's it's proven, you know, that her on screen has like it, it does move the needle, you know. Literally but, the Beyonce of the division. Yeah. So when people say that, you know, she's not a draw and like I hate that term, you know, she's not a draw, you know, or somebody isn't a draw because like as a professional wrestling fan, I feel like it's kind of corny to to lean on things that don't necessarily concern us. Like mm-hmm. it, it don't matter. Like a lot of us we go and we watch pro wrestling in gyms. You know, we watch it in, you know, parking lots, like, you know, mm-hmm. and, and in those instances, it's not, you know, hundreds of people, it's a hundred people in some instances, you know, so this idea of being a draw, you know, that doesn't have any bearing when it's something that you really, really like, you know. Just- <laughs> Yes, so Battle of the Valley. Yes, um, even though um, you have different people, um, I believe Kenny Omega mm-hmm. is also booked for this event. Um, of course, as well as Okada. But Mercedes has already been proven. You know, Mercedes is the draw. Um, Mercedes, um, of course, in New Japan for Wrestle Kingdom, the draw was Mercedes, Kenny Omega, those two. They drew, but this right here, Mercedes Monet all day. Yeah. Uh, so, or former known as Sasha Banks. So y'all told me that she wasn't no draw. They was telling, they said to us that she don't bring in the Becky and the Charlotte type money. That's what that's what they said. That people who say that are full of shit because like. If anything, that's something that they use to discredit her because in no way, shape, or form do they have the the, the interest and the investment in a Becky and Charlotte the way that they pretend that they do. You know, right. because it's and that's why I always question, you know, people's, you know, people's sincerity when they talk about women's wrestling. Because is it about women's wrestling or is it about your favorite woman wrestling? Right. Because I feel like those are two completely different concepts. You know, and then it's just also very tacky in regards to, you know. Benji, no, it's not. No, <laughs> no, it's not. No, please don't. My mom, last week, it wasn't up here. And then they got put in the playoffs. Mom put it back up here. So she just trolling me. So no, it's not. I'll take it down. If I if it wasn't her birthday, I would have took it down. But, but yeah, it's just corny how, like, once again, it's just this idea that, you know, a black woman, you know, asserted her value, knew her worth you know, went to go bet on herself and then everybody is making it seem as if she was never anything and that she was only who she was because of where she worked and like not understanding that a lot of that, you know, is who she is and what she does. Like when Sasha was in New York, she would go and train at, you know, HOG, you know, she would go and, you know, work with, you know, flexibility coaches and everything. That's not somebody who's, you know, a uh, flash in the pan that somebody who cares about what it is that she does you know she could just as easily coast on being you know the the top you know woman star in that company but she continued to do the work she continues to grind she continues to get better and that alone should make her worthy of whatever price that she wants to set for herself no matter where she goes so for everybody who keeps saying that she's not a draw or she she's gonna fail like that says more about you know your loyalty to a company than it is to the performers and what they do and what they're willing to give in order to entertain your ungrateful asses. 
And I want to give a shout out to the crew because I was the crew stayed up to watch the rest of the kingdom. A lot of them, this was their first time watching it. Um, it was it was a great experience because, like I was saying on Twitter, I was just like them where Chris Jericho crossed over to New Japan. I was just like, okay, I gotta stay up at what time? All right, I stay up at one time, and then he was the main event. I was like, oh lord, I gotta stay up until <laughs> five in the morning to watch him. Okay, I said because I was just like the crew when Chris Jericho uh, debuted in New Japan, and so and I felt everything. I felt everything that they was feeling. They was just like, okay, who is who? Who is who is that? Is this person good? Okay. What time we gotta stay up? What I don't get it. I was do I was the same way. So I was like, okay, kudos to the crew, because they did the crew, they held it down. They still sticking with Sasha Banks, and that's a good thing. They following, they following Sasha. They not just, you know, they getting on people that is clowning her and all of that stuff. Shout out to the crew because y'all is one of the ones that, you know, y'all still loyal to her. Y'all yeah. still fans of her and y'all still supporting her. So shout out to the crew for that because when Moxley had switched up, you had people calling him that used to be a Dean Ambrose fan and they switched up on him. Y'all switched up on my Jericho at one point in time. Y'all switched up on AJ Styles when he chose to be in WWE. Like when people bet on themselves, if you a fan of them, just just you know just support them still just let them you know what i'm saying let them sort of you know do what they do so i commend wrestlers that do bet on themselves and they believe in themselves and they know what they're doing like hey i can i made a name of myself here i can make a name of myself right here yeah that's what it's all about you have faith in yourself you have confidence in yourself and you trust you trust yourself and that's what she did she you know i'm I don't need WWE. I can make a name for myself here. I can make a name for myself here. You know, now New Japan got what they said. They had a record of 96,000 uh, from the U.S. that watched Wrestle Kingdom. That's that's a record right there. Um, so, you know, that's Mercedes. She's a draw. So, yeah, like I don't I don't know why people didn't figure like if people were going to follow, you know, Dean Ambrose, you know, to AEW or like whoever from WWE or whoever from the Indies who went to, you know, AEW or even WWE to some esteem, why that wouldn't be the same case with her. Like literally she was the face of the entire division Mm -hmm. at one point. So like, it's absurd to think that somebody that big wasn't going to have a bunch of people come and follow her. Like, I don't think people understand the magnitude of like having, you know, Black women, especially, who got into professional wrestling because of, because of Sasha, Sasha Banks. Banks. Mm-hmm. Now, those same black women are now probably going to be more invested in New Japan and stardom because she's now over there. Like that—that's a crazy concept to like to to really really dwell on, you know. And that just shows the reach that she has as you know mm-hmm. a, a performer, and you know just how invested people are in her. You know, as a performer, it's not even that. Like I've said on Twitter, like seeing her stand ten toes in her worth and what she believe in, inspired me as a podcaster, a black woman that's in podcasting for wrestling content. Like, you know, regardless of what this person say or what this person do, or no need to shuck and jive if you don't feel. If you don't feel like they don't understand your words, she said it on the fucking Stone Cold podcast. Like, I deserve the same stake as Vince McMahon. Vince McMahon, yeah. And that's what the fuck that she did. So, if you're a woman, if you're a black woman, especially, if anything, if Sasha Banks ain't teach you nothing, she taught us to know our words, stand ten toes, regardless, because we don't have to be in the same fucking table. We can make our own fucking table. Exactly. Exactly. We can make our own table. We can have bring, provide our own state. We can do our own things. You don't have to just be attached to certain people or, well, I, I still want to live my dream. I, no. it's We in a time where it's different promotions now. You got AEW, you got New Japan, you got AAA, you got CML. Like, you have different things. And she made, you know, she went over there to New Japan. New, uh, the Valley Show is about to sell out. So she's still getting her M&M's. Definitely. So, yeah, goofy of the week. 
IWC, do better because what what are we doing? Yeah, like, we 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 really can't. I I understand that you know the the wrestling fan base by nature is just toxic, but when you look at it from the outside looking in, when you zoom out, like essentially, I just want a black woman to fail, and that's just probably the corniest <laughs> thing in any capacity. Just don't eat the steak. Stay like <laughs> Wowzer. Talk about WWE succession. We on season two. <laughs> this shit is going to be crazy. Wowzer. Yes. So, um, you, before we leave out, you have anything? Oh, what's the skull? If you in the chat, what's the skull? Did, did TCU even like pinch the bitch or what? Did they even <laughs> kick or what's going on with the score? Are we, we done? Well, we we gotta go back home to Fort Worth. They gotta go back to Fort Worth. Are they that done? Fort, that Fort Worth shit, like you said. He said, "Oh, you don't want to know." Damn, <laughs> they embarrassed us. Moment of silence with TCU, y'all. And there's that. <laughs> <laughs> they embarrass us. You have any uh, shout outs or announcements that you want to give the audience before we get up out of here? I do. I do. Um, first and foremost, I want to give a shout out to you, Keeks, because I've seen you grow this platform like literally from the ground up and the way everybody has been rocking with you and supporting you. You know, even when you got your account suspended, we all felt like we lost a homie in the fields but <laughs> to see that you you were able to do what a lot of people in this space can't do and that's be yourself and have people really resonate with who you are by being yourself so for that i definitely want to salute you and definitely thank you for having me on because i really really wanted to do this show for like the longest time so for you to reach out for you to make me the first guest? Am I the first guest this year? Yeah, you're the first guest of the yeah, year. Yeah, yes. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you're the first, first guest, guest of the year, yes. First guest of the year. Like, this has definitely been an honor and a privilege. And I just want to see you keep doing your thing and just grow. But, like, I don't even have to say that because we know that's a given at this point. So, definitely shout out to you and shout out to everybody at Public Enemies for doing what they've been doing for the black wrestling community. Like yes. words can't express like what they've done and how they've made us be seen by so many different people. Like yes. get acknowledged by, you know, the top of the tops when it comes to professional wrestling, you know, and just making sure that we have a voice in this space. So I definitely appreciate all of y'all for having me on today. Thank y'all. Oh my God. I was <laughs> play it, play it for her one more time, Graham, for her. <laughs> Do it for Shanty. <laughs> yeah. I really pre I I've, I've I've always wanted you out here. I'm like, I'm gonna ask him next season to get on here. But of course I'm gonna have to have you back this year. So this ain't gonna be this ain't gonna be his first time on here. I'm gonna have him back again. Uh, but I, I really appreciate you. It's 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 hard for a written I hear now I'm playing. But it is hard. It's it's really hard. But I really appreciate the love. It's it's a lot. Oh I'm I'm really humble. I was just like, oh, don't y'all, you know, but uh I really appreciate it. Um, all y'all that's in the chat, make sure y'all get y'all women business merch. Uh, the Women Business Merch, the link is in my bio on my Twitter. Um, also, uh, make sure you follow the scene on Twitter and also on his TikTok. He has entertaining TikToks, <laughs> especially when you be responding to people. <laughs> I do enjoy watching it. So make sure you I'm, I'm trying to do better. I'm trying to do better this year. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> so make sure y'all follow him on Twitter and all socials. Uh, he is a AEW fan. He does uh, support WWE certain wrestlers like I do too. I still watch because I said, well, I don't, I ain't gonna say I watch. The only reason why I watched SmackDown because Charlotte was on there. But um, after Charlotte left, that's when I turned it off. 
Um, so I only support certain wrestlers um, on there, but uh, make sure y'all follow him. Um, beautiful spirit. Uh, I appreciate you joining the show. Um, also, y'all make sure y'all uh, follow Public Enemies on YouTube and also you like and subscribe. Um, follow me on Twitter. Um, I am all elite with kicks on Twitter. Um, and also follow me on Instagram and also on TikTok. Uh, it's all the same. Uh, Twitter, Facebook, I mean, shit, not Facebook, but Twitter, Instagram, TikTok is all the same. Make sure y'all purchase the merch. Uh, make sure y'all follow, um, uh, what kid talking about? You forgetting the guy. What guy am I forgetting? I'm forgetting Mad Cat Moss. <laughs> Mad Cat Moss is with that girl and it's making me mad. So I'm not going to say nothing to about him. He's pissing me off right now. I don't want him with that girl. But um, yeah, so make sure y'all tune into Dynamite this week. Make sure y'all tune into Rampage. Uh, the Jaguars are in the playoffs, so you know Tony Khan is with that book, and you know he go crazy when the Jaguars is doing good. So, <laughs> um, yeah, we got a solid card. We got Game Seven of Dead Triangle and the Elite. Uh, Brian Danielson versus the Soup Takashita. That's gonna be a good ass match. Yes, sir. Uh, that's gonna be a good ass match. Uh, Jamie Hayter, Britt Baker, Tony Storm, Soraya, Tony Storm, quote unquote. Uh, you're gonna hear from uh, mm-hmm. Jericho Appreciation Society. They was at the uh, indie show PWG. Um, Jericho showed up like it was 1988. We ain't seen, you know, Jericho ain't been to no indie show since 1988. So <laughs> for him to pop up on that, you know, that said something. And people was mad that he was at an indie show. I, I've never heard no shit like that. People pay $20 and they end up seeing Jericho. I don't know what y'all mad at. I'm jealous. <laughs> I'm jealous they saw Jericho for $20. Um, then you got Big Bill and uh, uh, Evil Frank Ocean versus Jungle Hook. Uh, so, you know, that should be something. And then you got John Moxley versus Adam Page. So, we got a solid card for Dynamite uh, coming this Wednesday. So, make sure y'all tune in. Um, if it's nothing else, um, hit my getaway music, Graham. You've mentioned a couple names recently. Who were they? Listen, man, they called me the problem, but you could call me the can man because anybody can get it. Africans, Americans, Dominicans, Mexicans, anybody can.